Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I don't think I've ever tasted a, uh, done, done a tasting uh, for uh, drinking outside the box. Would I have four tanats? Uh, actually, they, these aren't all 100% tanat, but um, tanat is certainly uh, a feature in all of them. Uh, one of them is from, uh, not Uruguay, but from Argentina. Uh, the other three are from southwest France. Uh, I, I was just going to do concentrate on the southwest French one, and then this, this, this uh, RG one arrived. I thought, stick it in there. So I'll start with it. Um, so it is uh, El Esteco Tanat uh, from the Michel Torino estate uh, in the Calchaki Valley, uh, Valley which um, is um, part of the province of Salta, I think. Well, Tanat is, um, I mean, in, in, in southwest France, it produces, as its name implies, wines that are big, full of tannin and uh, taming the tannin it can be a problem in south america um they it's they have more intensity of sunlight and so it, that that's less of a problem the problem the tann tannins seem to ripen uh in and in this part of argentina uh, i find that the, some of the wines from here outclass quite a lot of the uruguayan uruguayan ones um i'll probably get hit uh, bombed by the uruguayans for saying that but um uh, that's how i feel um and I stick my nose in here and it feels a bit like it's going to be sweet, chocolatey, ripe and fleshy. But there's this uh, earthiness about it. There's a savoury earthiness. And it's strange. It's like got new world sweetness of fruit with old world earthiness. Yeah, just as, just as I thought. It's got... Um, uh, fruit that's not quite well, just on the right side of raisiny. Um, and so it's got blackberries, a bit of uh, very dark, dark plums in there. Uh, and this savoury, meaty character in there. Um, it's um, it, it's young, chunky, juicy, fleshy wine. I wouldn't say it were immensely classy, but it's one of those, if you like your big throaty Shirazes, as the Australians used to make them, uh, then you'll probably really enjoy this. I Maybe I find it's, uh, it's um, subtlety isn't its strong point, depth of flavour is, and I can't fault it for that. Let's head to southwest France, home of Tanat and uh, some other weird grapes, some of which end up in some of the wines later on. But um, first one, um, no, no, well, it's the partner here isn't all that we uh, weird. Uh, so this is Domaine Chirolet, uh, Grand Reserve 2009, um, from the Côte de Gascoigne, and this is Merlot and Tanat. Uh, I'll give this one a whirl. And the fruit here, um, it smells uh, less ripe. It yeah, smells like it's got a fresher edge here. Um, it, so it's, it's maybe more on the black currants, the blackberries, uh, even something of uh, an apple in there. Uh, but maybe something that um, I'm not all that much of a fan of. I get a, 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 It feels like there's a, an imprint of smoky bacon oak here. It feels like the, 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 the type of barrel has this really quite strong smoky flavour that's uh, uh, given its imprint to the wine. And yes, that smoky bacon is one of the things that's maybe um, just a little bit too prominent. Uh, and there's the soft, um, slightly baked berry edge of, um, uh, of ripe Merlot. I, I'd almost rather that they'd got the uh, Tanat and um, uh, had it the other way around. So Tanat had a chance to shine and they'd shoved it in... Um, a barrel that wasn't quite, uh, uh, that didn't speak quite as loud. It feels like there is some nice tannut in there, uh, but in an effort to uh, uh, to get it to calm down, uh, they've maybe pushed it too far to the back. It's okay, um, and uh, but um, I, I think that there was a better wine to be made. Second uh, Southwest France wine, so wine number three from this tasting. Um, so this is uh, Appellation of Madiron, 2010, and the winery is Clos Basti. Well, I can't really remember what the uh, regulations are for Madiron. Um, maybe is it 75% or 70% Tanat or 50% Tanat? I'll, I'll flush it up. But here, um, this is much more what I was uh, I, I want from Tanat. Uh, there is this juiciness and uh, it's that sweet, oily, cassis, blackcurrant uh, richness. And um, but with this earthiness about it, uh, and it's a fresh earth. Maybe the, the uh, I got that earthiness in the uh, in in the Michel Torino, the El, El Esteco wine. But uh, there was just that little bit too a little bit too much of of the, of the overripe character. Here, there's a sweetness and freshness uh, of um, of ripe fruit, but not overripe fruit. And it feels like the way in which they've aged it. Um, they've 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 re aged it in a way that the fruit is still to the fore, uh, but it's softened slightly. Uh, but has it softened the tannins? Let's have a taste and see. 
I think they've done a really good job there. I, there's a, the sweetness, juiciness and roundness of fruit. And then the tanny, tannat earthiness kicks in. They've not been afraid to um, uh, leave it as with quite a lot of tannin there. But uh, the way in which they've... Um, They've extracted the flavours, they've done it in a gentle way and not extracted too much of the hard tannins. Then they've left it in a barrel long enough and the barrel's been not too full of oak, uh, smoky oak flavour, uh, uh, long enough for, the, for the, the wine to soften. It's still on the chewy side and there'll be some people um, who will be, who'll be going... But there'll be others who are going, ooh, bring me a steak. Um, and uh, I think I fall into that camp. It's um, tasty wine. Let's see whether the final one's tasty wine. Um, so um, this isn't Madiron, uh, this is uh, the appellation of Saint-Mont, um, this is from Producteur Plémont and it's their Grand Vin uh, L'Empreinte, the, the imprint of Saint-Mont, 2010 and it's a mixture of Tanat uh, with a grit called Pinonc. And it's a little bit, bit more savoury and uh, meaty uh, than, the, uh, the, than the previous one. Um, if I say it's less pure, I, I, it, it sounds it sounds like that's a pejorative term. What I mean by that uh, is uh, the, the the previous one had, had just this lovely, fresh, uh, juicy uh, core of fruit. Here it feels like there's a bit more earthiness, a bit more funkiness going on in there, um, and um, it, good but different. Firmer, I notice more um, more tannin here. Uh, I also notice more tannin from oak. I think there's a, a little bit of um, not the smoky bacon oak I was getting on the, on the uh, uh, on the second wine, but um, just that slightly raw wood tannin here. Uh, it feels like a wine that um, is still work in progress. The previous one, I'd be I'd, 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 if I had the right food, I'd set into it now. But this one feels like it's a wine that still needs to relax into its bottle. I'm not sure how long it's been in barrel. Let's see if it says anything on the back. No, a mixture of power, exuberance, and elegance. Well, I see certainly see the power and the exuberance. And I think that the elegance is something that's uh, uh, going to need a little bit more uh, time to uh, uh, to come through. Uh, what time is it now? It's quarter to five. I wouldn't be surprised if I poured, uh, the, if I decanted this and uh, ate something about 7.30, uh, that it was suddenly, uh, the structure had remained sort of still firm, but the fruit flavours had uh, expanded around it. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the, the Madiron uh, performed in a similar fashion. Toss-up between those two. Uh, for my favourite wine, actually no, I, I think the Madiron is, is, the, uh, is, the, is the classy one. Uh, but I'd be very interested to see what the, the Saint-Mont uh, does with time. But um, Tanat, I mean it's, uh, it's a grape that um, it needs sunlight, it needs heat. Uh, and um, so maybe you'll start seeing it planted in uh, uh, a few places around the world, apart from Uruguay, apart from Argentina, apart from France. Actually, Brazil's got some pretty nice tannat, uh, but um, maybe we're going to see some more around the world. Watch this space. See you soon.